literally came to us doing nothing. We built the funnel for them. We basically helped them with our offer. We did everything as an agency. And within six months, they're doing $100,000 a month to profit. Um, came back home. I'm about to put another 50,000 pounds. So there's like 3,000 dollars in crypto. Rise and grind. Never gets the worm. Not really. I think it's 8.45. This may be potentially the most late rising entrepreneur day in the life video you've probably ever seen. But that is a realistic day in the life out here in Dubai. So every day I wake up 8.30. And then I go straight to the steam room and sauna uh, in my apartment building. So I do a quick steam sauna for maybe 20 minutes, come back here, shower, and then get to my desk for 10 o'clock and start working out. It's like terrible. Still, still didn't load up my aura ring stat. So, you know, I'll throw that up on screen. I get the feeling it was probably 70s. Last night I was actually with an old friend and I had a bit of wine, which I don't normally do on a Monday. Something that may have ruined my sleep. But anyways, it's fine. We will go sweat it out. So yeah, good morning from sunny Dubai. So ladies and gentlemen, real quick, let me just tell you what I'm working on uh, in today's sort of big work block. Now, usually it'll be something very actionable. Um, some of you guys may or may not know, I have four companies, but you know, Gadget is a little bit more for fun. Do I have my blue light blockers here? No, I don't. Uh, three real uh, main companies. I have my agency, I have my education company, and then I also have my software company. All of them are in the agency sphere. Basically my entire life has to do with uh, agency and running an online agency. So I basically oscillate between those companies. Some months I might be working on hiring uh, for the agency. I might be working on new systems for the agency. I might be working on uh, a new funnel. Uh, you know, For extended periods of time, I might be working on new products for the education company. I might be working on a pricing slash retention mall, or for example, uh, dialing in customer service for uh, my software company. You know, it all depends, but my morning work really is about, hey, what can I do uh, to drive the direction of my companies forward? There are different stages. You know, if this is four years ago, um, you know, if this is four years ago, I would be sitting down at my desk and I would be reaching out to clients. Like I would be doing outreach. I'd be putting my camera down. I'd be doing video audits. Back in the day, I used to upload them to YouTube uh, and send them as unlisted videos. And that would be my day. Would just be trying to get new clients. Obviously at different stages of the business, there's different things. For today, I am doing a few hour deep dive into the direction of the agency. Now, as most of you guys probably know, I've been running my agency, IAG Media, for the past five years. At first, it was a creative agency for the first 18 months. And then from there, uh, we had like a six months weird phase where we're doing uh, creative stuff, but then also ads. So a bit of a blend, almost like a full service agency. And for the last three years, we have been ad exclusive. And I've scaled it up to a very, very good point. In full transparency, this year, I thought I would do uh, close to 1.5, potentially even $1.8 million in profit. Um, I think we're going to land, just being honest with you, somewhere around 1.2 million. And this is part of today's deep dive or sort of brainstorming um, that I need to do is I am the bottleneck to my agency. And it hurts me a lot to say that um, because of how hands off I've had the agency and how, you know, I always pride myself in really growing businesses that can sort of grow without me. And like, there's no real cap on them. Now, the main issue with my agency at the moment, as I said, this is why I was predicting or forecasting a 1.5 to 1.8 because the first four months were insane. They were amazing. Like the first four months were great. Um, and then the issue is I had to switch my focus uh, to the other businesses. And this kind of keeps happening. And I'm at a stage right now with my agency for the past five years where yes, could I continue? I, I genuinely know for a fact I could continue to run it for the next five years, keep doing what we're doing, obviously keep making some tweaks. Uh, and I could do 100 to even $150,000 a month profit every single month for the next five years. And you know, at the moment, I work four or five hours a week on my agency. And by the way, bear in mind that is because I have an incredible team, I have an incredible CMO. You know, it's not, it, you, you don't just start like that, okay? But I'm not really a person who likes to be stagnant. OK, uh, so I'm now having to make the decision of I'm at the moment looking at potentially buying another agency and having sort of an operating CEO there. So I, 
you know, if I need to focus on another business for six months, it's not stopping the growth because yes, you can, if you don't focus on something, you can maintain it. And by the way, don't ever let anyone tell you that, you know, um, never get it twisted about passive income or like a business that you just set and forget nothing, you know, everything deteriorates, right? And you have to give stuff focus. And the thing is, you know, when I give focus to the agency, which is usually two or three months a year, you know, we feel the effects of that and, you know, things grow and the cogs start to turn. And, you know, um, there's usually, you know, the way it goes is usually like this and then it goes like that for nine months until I have some time to give him, uh, you know, a full undivided attention for a few months. And it goes like that. And just, it's just a frustrating process, you know, uh, for me right now. And I know some of you guys are listening to this and going, oh, poor you, you know, you got a business doing, you know, a million, a million and a half a year in profit. And, you know, you have to work three, four hours a week and, you know, you're not happy with it. But yeah, you know, it's it's whatever. It's never been about the money, uh, or at least at this stage, it's, it's really not about the money anymore. It's, um, I, you know, I want to feel like I'm, I'm just going to that next level. I don't want to stay at the same level for the next five years. I just think that would be a little depressing. So as I said, I'm either looking to buy an agency um, with an operating sort of a director and go 50 50 on that. But for that, I want it to be a local lead gen agency. So I don't want to be doing uh, e-commerce uh, online SaaS companies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's one option. The other option that we're looking at is sort of starting the um, sort of private equity arm of IG Media. And that would be, I would have to rebrand. So basically now the only clients that we serve are brands that I am invested in, whether those be e-commerce businesses. And that's the other decision I need to make is I'm deciding whether to go down the route of e-commerce businesses or info product education companies. You know, on earth, I'd say there's not many people who understand the online education industry as good as me, obviously running the largest education company for agency owners, gradiency.com. But then the fact that at my agency, you know, between gradiency and our other clients, there's months where we'll sell two, three, four million a month. Yeah, yeah, probably even yeah, probably even up to 4 million a month uh, for education companies and f for education companies. That's a lot, you know, for we have e-commerce clients. Well, not 4 million, but in the past, like clients that we've done 3 million a month for just from ads. Uh, but for education companies, that that's quite a lot of money. So, yeah, we've done an insane different niche. So, yeah, now I'm deciding, do I want to go down the route of online education companies and actually invest and you sort of bring up and nurture uh, people that I see have potential? Because as I said, we have clients that literally came to us doing nothing. We built the funnel for them. We basically helped them with our offer. We did everything as an agency. And within six months, they're doing $100,000 a month profit. And, you know, that's cool when you're taking a 7,800 pound a month uh, service fee. That's great, right? But in that situation, I'd like to start having ownership in that. So, yeah, as I said, the options are rebrand IAG Media, potentially bring someone in sort of as a, a, a managing director who would work alongside my CMO, Danny, but buy a lead gen agency open up a lead gen agency and partner with someone. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, my right hand man at one of my other companies was saying is like, dude, wh like, why the hell would you buy one when you know how to start agencies uh, like nothing, you know, and you could actually and you could partner up with someone in one of your higher level programs uh, and do it that way. Um, so those options or start getting into uh, private equity. Um, and that kind of relates to uh, looking at uh, some properties later today is that I want to start diversifying and we'll get onto that in just a little bit. But and as long story short, I need two hours with my candle with some binaural beats uh, and just to have some thinking time as to where I want to take the agency next year. Because, um, yeah, I want to shake it up. I, I don't want to stay at the same level. So, yeah, that's a little insight as to this morning's work session. <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, this is Flavor, my best friend. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I was, I was ready for that. <laughs> uh, you, want, you want to plug your agency? Yeah, let's do it. All right, start again. Yeah. You're saying <laughs> Here you go. This is Aries Advertising. Who do you work with? What sense? <laughs> so I get all lonely in this three bedroom. Is this a three or four bedroom? It's not two. Three bedroom. Oh yeah, two but no. Two plus maid. No, but and office. No, but Texas is a three. It was a three four. Bedroom. I don't know whether to call it because it is bed plus maid. Because it is four bedrooms. To, do we call it consider the maids? It's really weird in Dubai. They they call it like like this has four bedrooms, but it's one's a maid's room, which is still the size of London uh, rooms and all for like London bedrooms. Uh, I think it's my bathroom. <laughs> as big as your bathroom. Are you kidding? It's like three times the size of your bathroom. All right, all right. <laughs> Sorry. That was uncalled for. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, as I said, I get lonely out here. So uh, Flubo has sta been staying with me for uh, like seven, eight weeks. He's, ha ha he's heading back to London next week. 
<laughs> he's heading back to London next week. But anyway, so he's actually on TikTok, um, getting some TikToks ready because I'm gonna react to some of them for a video. But now we are gonna head downstairs. I'm actually meeting the real estate agent uh, who helped when I secured this property. I'm renting this place. It's a three bed plus made one room I turned into an office but you guys will probably see the house tour pretty soon or maybe you've already seen it but as I kind of alluded to earlier I want to diversify my portfolio right now I've got like 80% 90% of my investment portfolio uh, in cryptocurrency I've got the rest in alternative investments watches uh, a Birkin collection etc etc um, so yeah, I think it's like 80% like 8 million or eight and a half million dollars in crypto uh, and then like two million uh, or a million and a half yeah two million in like alternative investments <laughs> anyways i could have a hundred million dollar investment portfolio and it's funny my mom would still consider me unsuccessful and broke if i don't own any property um so in general i'm really not a fan of property especially in london i saw zero use at all uh when i was living in london for 17 years property never appealed to me they treat landlords there like shit the interest payments on your mortgage from the bank you can't even offset as an expense like being a landlord in the us is just way better than the uk i'd say uk is probably one of the worst places on earth so now moving to dubai then being a lot more fair on landlords uh plus the fact that here the rental yields are actually pretty decent for example the property i'm in i think is worth around two million dollars but i pay a hundred and i'm covering for pounds one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year in rent so that's a pretty good rental yield compare that to the uk the last four bedroom house i was in in the center of knightsbridge that house there was another one listed on the street uh for around 5.5 million dollars and mine was like the second nicest or tallest so yeah i think that house was worth probably around six million dollars and my rent per year was hundred and twenty thousand dollars so the yields are just just literally not even worth it so long story short i'm now a little bit more open to the idea of buying some properties so i'm going to be looking today at some properties between one and a half and two and a half million dollars uh, and i think i might be picking up something and especially as we get into some of the more euphoric stages of the bull run because uh, i still think we have a lot to go and to be honest i think at the end of the year my portfolio could be worth anywhere from on the low end at the moment it's what eight and a half million dollars on the low end 14 million up to potentially even 25 million, especially the way that my portfolio is allocated with all coins. I hold zero Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. So time to go buy some property or potentially buy some property. In other news, right before this clip came, I got my new AirPods. Uh, so these are the AirPods 3, um, which I hate compared to the AirPods Pros, uh, but these are water resistant and sweat resistant, I think. Um, point is, I've broken uh, a couple of AirPods Pro by going in the sauna with them. Anytime I'm in the sauna, I'm listening to like podcasts or audiobooks. So yeah, these are my burner pair. Anyways, let's head downstairs. into uh, those viewings looking for an investment property. I left with potentially a new apartment to live in. Um, so the ones here in, uh, I'm not gonna say the building because I live here. I mean, look, I've, I've actually talked to Tristan about this. Like it's pretty obvious where I live. If you know Dubai, like you can tell by where anyone lives if they live in like sort of a big iconic building uh, or like one of the more like prestigious properties. Um, so yeah, whatever, but I guess you don't know what floor I live or what specific apartment. Plus here there's security and cameras everywhere. Plus Dubai is one of those places where 
I've literally witnessed people put their Richard Mill on their day bed, go to the beach and come back and nothing. Like it's so safe. Uh, the only thing I will say is already in Dubai, I've had a few times where I never do it at the time, whatever I'm placed, I never tag my, uh, my location, but I've had friends that are with me that people know are my friends. And based on that, I've had people show up to, um, yeah, show up to where I am basically. And it's always been sweet just to say hi and, you know, thank you. And, you know, uh, you helped me build my business, my agency, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, everyone I ever meet is very sweet. Um, it's just, for example, in London, when people used to go to, not my last house, because we were very careful with security about there, but the one before that, I had it many times. I'm, I had it three times in the last week I was there. People uh, show up at my house in the morning, uh, just wanting a photo or something, uh, which is very sweet, but uh, I can get a little in these. Anyways, reason I say all this is because uh, I looked at a couple properties in the same building that I am renting to buy. Uh, the rental yields on those make sense. So for example, uh, one of the properties, the three bedroom was three bedroom, which is the worst style to this. So I have a three bed plus made. It was also three bed, but it's like not the configuration that I like personally. Uh, that's why I didn't uh, rent that style. So that one was 7.1 million AED and just gonna throw up the uh, translations here. Uh, and you could rent it out for 600,000 AED per year. That's actually what I pay for this uh, property. Um, but bear in mind, I got this property or negotiated it uh, around July. Um, so prices have really gone up since then. Like if you wanted this property now, uh, rental wise, it would cost you much more than 600. I would assume probably around 700,000. You're gonna pay that extra 100,080 for the nicer format. Anyways, 7.1 million AED, um, or so yeah, 600,000, and then you, you pay 41 AED per square footage, and this is 2,000 square feet. Uh, so it came out to, what is that, like 88,000, uh, or this, I think it's 2,100 square feet. So it came out to like 88,000 uh, AD per year. Uh, I have to pay because we're on the service department side. Uh, so that's sort of the yearly fee. And then let's just say other fees in this, and that comes out to 100,000 AD. So let's say my actual take home, 500,000 AD. So let's see, 500,000 uh, divided by 7.1 million. Comes out to around a net 7% return per year. Uh, after fees and stuff like that. Now, if I got a mortgage, totally different story, right? Cash on cash return, I mean, it would be amazing. Depends how much money I'd have to put down and this and that. But if I bought a cash, just so you can get an understanding of cash, uh, it would be a 7% return after fees and everything like that, which now, you, if anyone knows much about property, like that's insane. Like you compare that to London, uh, it's insane. So, yeah, obviously all those other properties I was looking at from the lens of like, oh, this would be an investment. And then I went to Royal Atlantis and they <laughs> sold out of all the three bedrooms, four bedrooms. They only had a five bedroom, which was $10 million, um, which business and investments have gone well this year, uh, but I'm not quite yet at a place to buy that. Unless I actually mortgaged it, then that would be actually within my price range. That's almost roughly some, that's actually almost roughly what I did this year, which is pretty crazy to say. Anyways, I'll not be buying that five bedroom property. Uh, the two bedrooms though, uh, they had a couple different options uh, and they were around $3 million. Um, I think the cheapest one was 1.7 million pounds. So that is, uh, she's very courteous to convert to pounds for me. Uh, 1.7 times 1.4, so that's $2.4 million, the cheapest one, the most expensive one we saw in terms of two bedroom format was, uh, 3.5 so yeah between 2.5 to 3.5 million dollars uh and the issue with that one is i liked it a lot <laughs> like it i liked it a lot uh the furnishing like where i am right now is as i said sort of one of the most prestigious uh, buildings in dubai but one thing that is very shocking about dubai is i'm just gonna say like the properties here are pretty in terms of the finishing in terms of like the interior design in my opinion is coming from london i get it in london you're living, like for example, my last house that I was in, it was a $6 million house and it didn't have real air con. Like it had air cooling. So in like three, like the living, the ground floor, nothing on the second floor. And then the third floor, it had air cooling. So it brings down to like 18 degrees, but it was pretty patchy. Um, so my point is like, I get it. Some people would look at London and be like, you have $10 million properties that don't even have air conditioning, right? Uh, but in London, everything, the finishing is always just very, very premium. and in this property and in this uh, building I'm in, everything is for the most part very premium, but it's not elite, right? 
this place that I went to, and I actually have one of my friends here who's been, who runs a real estate uh, agency, um, and he's been in the property game for 10 years here. Uh, and he was like, yeah, look, it's Royal Atlantis is the nicest development here in Dubai. Um, like, yeah, it's just yeah, top, top notch uh, finishing. So slight issue is I'm thinking of if I buy it, living in it. So yeah, I don't know, that's that. So anyways, that is bringing you guys along for a bit of property hunting. Um, came back home, I'm about to put another 50,000 pounds. So what is that, $70,000 in crypto? You can see right here. Uh, today is currently the 26th of, today is currently the 26th of October. On the 20th of October, I deposited 49,000 pounds. I do another 50,000 today. So every single month, so every single month, uh, basically my rule is I need to invest. What was that microphone? <laughs> basically my rule is I need to invest um, 100,000 every single month and then uh, anything I make outside of that, obviously I have to budget. Some months are bigger, some months are less. So I don't wanna, like my rule, in my mind, it's not like oh, anything above 100,000. Uh, I just have to blow. Like, you know, at that point I save it, but my point is I can kind of enjoy it. As long as I put a hundred grand every single month into my investment portfolio, then I live guilt-free uh, for the most part for the rest of my life. And a lot of months, you know, I do invest uh, a little bit more than that. But we are gonna put this into something. Just I'm gonna let you decide. What do you wanna do? I, I, I won't let you choose anything, cause yeah. AVAX. I know you, okay, AVAX? Yeah. Okay, perfect. You, you know, you know, like for the most part, like my portfolio mm -hmm. looks. Okay, fair. Mm -hmm. top up AVAX then. Um, so I'm gonna just put 50 grand into AVAX right here. I'm gonna... What about Shiba? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, gonna throw another 50,000 pounds into AVAX right now. And yeah, hopefully today's video, especially for those of you guys who don't really know me that well, uh, is a little bit of a life lesson. Find a cash flow business. You know, I already talked about my agency earlier on. I've been running my agency for five years. For the first three and a half years, I literally saved 80% probably 70, 80% of everything I made. Um, what that meant was that I had a nice, clean couple million I could invest. <laughs> and then I turned a couple million clean after tax into what is now uh, just a touch above over eight figures. So, so, so yeah. What a profound moment. <laughs> um, and I did all of that while never buying a Lambo. <laughs> I did all of that at 21 and I own zero Lambos. Actually, I own zero cars, full stop. So, I don't know. Take that what you will. Mm. Might be a reason behind that. Get my license any moment. <laughs> I, 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 I could have I my really license by next to. week. <laughs> if I wanted to. I could get it whenever. I could have whatever, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. This. Okay, so when I came to Dubai, I was adamant I was gonna get a drop. this. Gym today? <laughs> no. When I came to Dubai, I was adamant I was gonna get a driver. Mm -hmm. And then when I came here, I was like, you know what? Actually, I don't leave my house that much. I leave my house once, maybe twice a day. Once to go to the gym, and then once um, for dinners or whatever, like this and that. Um, also, I don't have an assistant here. Uh, my assistant is still in London, so I don't have an on the ground assistant, um, which hasn't been too much of an issue, but yeah. I um I was gonna get a driver and then I decided against it, but yeah, now that like, cause it's October and like October, November, December, Jan, like there's like actual, well especially like November, December, Jan, even Feb, like there's actual traffic in Dubai. It's horrific. It's terrible. So like even when I go to the gym, just waiting for an Uber, then I always forget to do it like right, like right before I'm even gonna leave, um, or like 10 minutes before I leave. Like getting an Uber is like eight, 10 minute wait time. So. Yeah, I know this is like, I know a lot of this vlog is just like super bougie, uh, like just like if a, me for if me like from five years ago watch me, I'd like want to slap me. But this is, these are, none of my problems are real oh, problems. How times change. Uh, how times change. Um, Where are we going? The gym. Okay. Oh yeah, I said that, didn't? I? No. No. Oh, yeah, we're going to the gym. That's why we're dressed like this. So, um, long story short, I'm gonna, gonna get a driver. You'll I just need my license. Yeah. <laughs> that's the big, that's actually why I didn't end up getting a driver is because here to buy a car, you actually need a license. It's like a weird thing. So yeah, I need to get a license, which I will finally get next month and then I'll buy a car and then I will get my driver. 
exclusive. I'll get my driver to stop off at my favorite kebab shop at 4 a.m. drunk on my way home from the club. <laughs> Spill garlic sauce all over my laurels. It's very active. Single life. Yeah, single Welcome life. Welcome to single life. It's not actually as glamorous as they no, make it out no. to be. All right, should we go to the gym? Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll wait for the Uber and then we'll yeah, go to the gym. Then we'll go to the gym. Rolling? Yep. So, ladies and gents, we are at TK MMA. We came here because the background music uh, would have probably copyrighted us. Yeah, strike. Probably, probably strike. All right, anyways. Look, long story short, about to get into a workout. Uh, a little bit about my training right now. It's okay, I'm doing kind of CrossFit-y style. I'm not taking things super serious, just kind of more maintaining. At the moment, I am 87 kilos. I want to get to 90 kilos by the end of the year. I am 183 centimeters, so that's six feet, even though I should know that's a story for another day how like Kieran has somehow managed to get it. Basically, basically uh, my right hand man at greatnc.com. Whenever, whenever he sees a comment of you guys asking how tall I am, he always says I'm five foot eight. And he said it so many times that now on Google it says I'm five foot eight. So, <laughs> fuck you, Kieran. Thank I can you. concur. He is five foot eight. I'm not five foot eight. This is me. No, you're just you're, you're just six height. foot four. This is me filming at normal. No, height. you're just six <laughs> foot four. All right. This is me if I was holding it by my waist. <laughs> Let's see, exactly. I'm kneeling down. <laughs> Anyways, um, man, I haven't done real quick gym edit like that. It's been like years. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> Spit We're gonna go back to one of your old videos. Oh, Cinematics in three, two, one. So just. <laughs> Just in saying a workout with me, uh, we're gonna do sort of the more functional, well, I guess half will be functional. Anyways, look, uh, we're gonna do a push workout, and yeah, I guess I'm not gonna walk you through anything that's in a fitness channel, so I guess we'll just roll and edit. Yep, see this looks any good, alright? Won't you come and see what it's like? Living by the rules that you write. You ain't not those lavish delights. Now you had no back in sight. All the little lies you recite. Just makes all the savage unite. Usually I'm very polite, but I'ma get savage tonight. Even when a dog be nice, every single dog gonna bite. You might think I'm wrong, but I'm right. Just let it get a strong appetite. I'ma let it breathe just a little. Give it to you strong, heavy metal. I don't make a sound when I strike. You better just. So ladies and gentlemen, just wrapped up a bunch of team calls, then a, a very ketogenic dinner of two ribeye steaks. Uh, and then now I have a client check-in call. Uh, this is a lot of really in-depth strategy. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's much that I'm gonna be able to show you to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get on this call. It is currently 8.30 p.m. here in Dubai, and then we'll get on with the rest of the day. All right, ladies and gents, after team calls, it's been a couple hours, now off to uh, dinner with oh, that's a loud phone call. Uh, off to dinner um, with some friends of friends uh, there in the city. Um, so maybe I'll do an outro with them. Maybe I won't. We'll see. My number one rule is you know, never ever ever tag a girl on Insta. So I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to give these girls the 15 seconds of fame. So we'll see. Hello, guys. Subscribe and enjoy guys, the If you don't like and don't surprise, you will get so much. You don't good things, so you need to. Guys, please! You know, you know, you know! Uh, Look, if you enjoyed that video, I went ahead and picked out another special video that I know you're gonna find immensely valuable. You can find it right there. I know you're gonna love it, and I'll see you in the next one.